country duo, the Common Linnets grab second with a duet, Calm After the Storm. Third place went to Swedish singer Sanna Nielsen for her song, Undo. German band Eliza came in a disappointing 18th place with their pop song, Is It Right? Francis Twin Twin perhaps put on the most colorful show, but the special effects didn't get them far. They came in last place. But politics was never far from the audience's mind. When Russia called in its vote, the crowd erupted in loud boos. Moscow. Right, we're out of time on this edition of the journal. See you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Can we preserve biodiversity? You said that the coral grows uh, one and to two centimeters centimeter. in the last uh, five months, so we are quite happy. Global Ideas presents answers from all over the world. Traditional knowledge. This is Cedrio. If you use it to make a tea, it'll help ease pain. Projects. I live on the coast. I feel it's my duty to protect the area, and that's why I bring my students here, so that they learn to love nature at an early age. Visions. Our strategy is based on the traditional lifestyle of the people as a way of preserving the environment for future generations. Global Ideas on Facebook, Twitter and DW. At the start of the week, there were heavy clashes in the eastern Ukrainian city of Slovyansk, taking the standoff to a new level. The army moved in to seek to retake the city from pro-Russian separatists. With both sides armed with heavy weapons, the fighting lasted for hours. The clashes left 30 separatists dead. Four government soldiers were also killed. In the end, government troops were unable to retake the city. Kiev accused the rebels of using the local population as human shields. Ukrainian soldiers cannot shoot at civilians. This is our limitation, which our enemy is making full use of. Our enemy is hiding behind civilians and shooting at us. The situation in Ukraine remains tense. Then on Wednesday there was a change of tone from Moscow. After talks with OSCE chairman Didier Burkhalter, President Vladimir Putin urged Ukrainian rebels to delay a planned secession vote. We are requesting that representatives of Ukraine's southeast and supporters of a federal Ukraine postpone the referendum that is planned for May the 11th. Putin also voiced support for presidential elections scheduled 25th in Ukraine, calling them a step in the right direction. Elections that Moscow had previously described as absurd. But on the ground, Putin's words appeared to make little difference. The rebels insisted they would go ahead with their vote on independence as planned. Egypt's former army chief appeared on a television show on Monday evening as he prepares to run in the country's presidential election. On the issue of the Muslim Brotherhood, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi was unequivocal. When one of the hosts asked straight out if the Brotherhood would cease to exist if he became president, the response was swift. Hey, precisely. Assisi acknowledged that there have been human rights violations, but said that was inevitable in the fight against terror. But if elected, he said he'd be his own man. Will the military rule under my presidency? Definitely not. Many Egyptians hope that Assisi will bring stability to their country. The elections are in just over two weeks' time, and there's little doubt about who will win. The German art collector who secretly hoarded a priceless collection of Nazi-looted paintings died suddenly this week. 
Cornelius Gourlit was 81 years old. Gourlit was a shy and reclusive man, catapulted into the spotlight by a tax investigation. When authorities raided his Munich flat, they made a discovery that shook the art world. More than 1,400 paintings were found, including masterpieces that had been lost for decades. Cornelius Gourlit inherited the collection from his father, Hildebrand Gourlit, an art dealer for Adolf Hitler. Many of the pictures were thought to have been looted by the Nazis. Authorities confiscated them and launched an investigation. Last month, Gourlit agreed to hand back works if it could be proven they were stolen. In his will, he bequeathed the entire collection to an art museum in Bern, Switzerland. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon was in South Sudan on Tuesday in a bid to bring the two warring factions together. The goal? To end the violence that has plagued the world's newest country and avert a possible genocide. The war pits supporters of President Salva Kiir, who is an ethnic Dinka, against those of his former deputy Riek Machar, a member of the Nur tribe. We hope that the peace will be regained as soon as possible. At the same time, I'm urging the leaders and all these commanders of military units to fully protect the civilian population. More than four months of fighting has left thousands dead and displaced more than a million. This week, Amnesty International accused both sides of severe human rights violations. Following the talks with Ban, Kir and Machar agreed to meet face to face for peace talks in Ethiopia at the end of the week. The result was a peace deal. The question now is, will it hold? Thailand's Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawat was forced to step down on Wednesday, throwing the country into further political upheaval. In a ruling broadcast live to the nation, the Constitutional Court ordered Yingluck and nine of her ministers out of office on charges of abuse of power. She denied all wrongdoing. We held true to the principles of honesty in running the country and never acted corruptly as we were accused. The former Commerce Minister Ni Wat Tamrong Boom Song Pai San was appointed caretaker Prime Minister. Yingluck's opponents celebrated the ruling as an initial victory, but protests are continuing, with demonstrators demanding the complete removal of the government and fundamental reforms before any new elections are held. Yingluck's support base is mainly in the poorer north and east of Thailand. Her supporters are also taking to the streets, stoking fears of further violence between the rival factions. Huge crowds turned out to vote in South Africa's landmark general election on Wednesday. The poll was seen as a litmus test for the governing African National Congress and its leader, Jacob Zuma. I'm very happy and I think uh, the results would be very good. He wasn't wrong. The ANC won convincingly, garnering 62% of the vote and giving Zuma a second five-year term as president. It was the first general election in which South Africa's post-apartheid generation was eligible to vote. Many young blacks born after the end of apartheid are critical of the ANC, citing high unemployment a huge divide between rich and poor, and allegations of widespread corruption. The main opposition Democratic Alliance, led by Helen Silla, had hoped to capitalize on that. It upped its share of the vote from 16 to 22 percent, but the electorate as a whole showed that it has not lost faith in the ANC. Syrian rebels withdrew from the central city of Homs this week, ending a siege that had lasted two years. Under a deal with the government of Bashar al-Assad, the rebels were given safe passage. Three years ago, these streets were full of anti-Assad demonstrators. Now it's a ghost town. Homs was often dubbed the capital of the revolution, and the withdrawal was seen as a victory for the government. Rebel fighters spent the past few months cut off from the outside world with no access to food or medicine.